Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Natalie Candela. I'm a hypnotherapist and a transformation coach. You're about to listen to one of my sessions. Enjoy. Once you reach the surface, I want you to tell me the first thing that you become aware of. As you begin to sense, see, hear, simply know. See it far or so the creek? Is it far away from you or near? Seems like I'm in the forest. And is it daytime? Yes. And there's some rays coming down to the trees. Good. So what I'd like you to do is look down at your feet. Tell me what you see wearing on your feet. Seeing like moccasins. <laughs> and I'd like you to then become aware of the rest of your body and begin to notice what you're wearing on the rest of your body. Almost like animal skins. Is it animal skins by themselves, or are they fashioned into some clothing? Just the skin. And is there anything else on your body other than the skins? I keep sensing beads. Where are they? Maybe in my hair. Okay. Near my ears. Are you in a male or in a female body? Maybe female. You young or old? I would say young. Approximately what age? Twenty. Are you healthy? Yes. So when you become aware of the beads in your hair, can you tell me in what form? Are they on your hair or are they on a string? I think they're on a string. And they are then laid on top of your head? Yeah. Okay. And how is your hair? It's behind the back. It's tied. Is it long or short? It's like medium. Okay. And what color is your hair? Dark black. As you're standing there in the forest, what else do you see around you? Deer. Is it far away? A little bit. And what do you do when you see it? Nothing. What else do you see? I see rocks in the creek. And what kind of feeling do you have as you're standing there? As you breathe, you're going to feel very relaxed and very comfortable. Your heart will open, your muscles will relax, and you will simply be aware of the information. Tell me why you're feeling that sadness. Seeing someone else with a small child, but the baby has its arms out, looking at someone else, I don't know who's over there. Are they in the forest with you, or you're just seeing it from the past? So in the forest. And so there's somebody else there with you? I don't know who it is. Is it a male or a female? It's a male. And how old is the child? Maybe two. And what is the sense that you get when you see them? you see the child? I wanted to go over there. Can you do that? Uh -huh. And when you do, what happens? I pick up the baby, but it seems like it's not mine. So when you pick up the baby, how is it responding to you? It's okay. Was the baby distressed before? I don't think so. It just seemed like it was going in one 
wanted to go somewhere over there and, and put it. Okay. So when you pick up the baby, just become aware of whose child this is. Whose child is it? My husband's. And is that man that's standing there your husband? I think so. But you didn't give birth to this child? Mm -mm. Okay. And so become aware of why you're there in the forest. I'm running away. Why are you running away? Someone's kind of curious. Someone's trying to get you? Yeah. Where are you heading? Not sure. As you take your next breath, you will feel a warm wave of comfort and relaxation rolling all through your body. And you will begin to receive a flow of information. Understanding why you're there, who is coming after you, and where you're heading. It's not coming to me. Okay. So I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, I'd like you to move back in time to the moment when something happened that caused you to begin to run. One, two, and three. So what is happening around you? People on the ship, they're unloading things. Mm -hmm. I see barrels. And where are you standing? Probably a couple hundred yards away. What are you wearing now? It's like a loose fitted skin, but it's not it's just loose. Are you still in the same body? I think so. Are you still the same age? I feel like I'm younger though. Okay. And about how old are you at this point? Seven. So you're standing there observing the ship get unloaded. Uh-huh. And what else do you notice around you? Just the ship. Is it a port? No. And do you know what they're bringing from the ship? Uh -uh. Are you standing there by yourself? Yeah. And why are you there? Just watching to see what's happening. And as you're standing there, what's going through your mind and what are you feeling? Like things are about to change. Let's move on the count of three to the time when the ship has unloaded or when you have moved on to the next event. One, two, and three. And tell me what you're aware of. I just see a grave. And do you know whose grave it is? My husband's. And how old are you now? Seventy. Okay. What do you see around the grave? I just see stones around the grave in an outline. It circles the grave. And how are you feeling as you're looking at the grave? I feel okay. And what do you see as you look further away? What is there beyond the grave? Just the forest. Do you live nearby? I think so. So on the count of three, see yourself in front of the place where you live. One, two, and three. 
Tell me what you see. I see a dark wood cabin. What's around it? I see a rain around it. Grass everywhere. There's some woods, but it's dark wood. It's like a log cabin. And how big is the cabin? Say it's medium size. Okay. So why don't you go inside and tell me what you see inside of the cabin? I see a fire going. I see a rocking chair. I see a bed with a quilt on it. I think it's just all open. It's one space. Uh huh. And who lives in that cabin now with you? I see a boy. And who's this boy? I'm not sure. How old is he? He looks young. Seven, eight. He's sitting at a table. What is he doing? He's coloring. He may look up at you and address you. How does he address you? Grandma. So does he live with you in that cabin? Yes. And where are his parents? They're gone. I'm protecting them. What do you mean by gone? Are they still alive? I think they are. So they just went away? Yeah. Permanently or just for a time? I think just for a time. Is it just you and your grandson in the cabin or is there anybody else that lives with you? I see a white and black cat now. And so I'd like you to move about a month back. One, two, and three. And tell me what's happening at that point. Looks like they're packing up a carriage for the horse, the wooden carriage. And they're leaving. And why are they leaving? To provide. So they're going for work? I think so. What kind of work are they going to do? Hunting. What do they hunt for? Deer. And how long are they going to be gone? A few months. And is your husband still there? No, oh, I don't see him. Okay. Which one of the parents is your child? The boy. Okay. Is he the boy that you saw at the beginning in the woods? Yes. Okay. So we're going to, on the count of three, move back a little bit more again. We're now going to move back to the time when your husband was still there. One, two, and three. Tell me what you see. He's just wearing like an animal skin, has bottoms. I think he has long hair. There's a wrap around his arm, a leather wrap. Can you tell me what color his skin is? It's like a dark tan. Okay. And how does his hair look? It's dark as well, black, long. And where do you live now? We're in the forest. See yourself standing in front of the place where you live now with your husband. What does it look like? It's kind of like a teepee. It's open. It's not small, but it's not huge. Okay. Are there other people around? Are there teepees around? 
see a few more in the distance. Okay. Who lives with you in that teepee? The boy we found. Tell me about this boy. What do you know about him now? He was my husband's partner before me, and she died. How did she die? I think she was killed. By whom? The people on that ship. Who were the people on the ship? I just see white people. And do you see them anywhere else? No, they're just moving onto the land. That's the land where you live. Uh -huh. When they first come, you're still a child? Uh huh. And so what happens then? What do you understand those white people do? They just take what's ours. Do you have a big tribe at that point when you're a child? I think it's a smaller tribe. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the first encounter that you have with white people. One, two, and three. Tell me what's happening. I'm kind of standing in the water, in shallow water. And I just see just a small boat with three people in it. They have hats on. They're wearing, it's like all black. Are they leaving or are they coming to the land? Looks like they're coming. And can they see you? Yes. And what is their reaction when they see you? No reaction. So what do they do when they reach the land? Looks like they're greeted by one of the people in the tribe. Are they welcome to come to your land? Doesn't seem like it. So what do you see happening next? I think someone was killed. Someone in your tribe? Uh-huh. And so why are they there? I think they were just there to discuss the land. What do they want? They want the land. What are they telling your representative or your chief? That they won't back down. What do they want you to do, all of you? Not exist. How do they want to accomplish that? By killing people. Do they tell you that they will kill you? No. So, how does the discussion go? What does your tribal member tell them? He's just saying you can't have our land. How are they communicating? <clears throat> They have a common language? I think so. So what happens at the end of the conversation? How does this situation end? I just see some people running in the distance. Is it members of your tribe? Mm-hmm. And what do you do? I'm hiding behind a tree. And how old are you at this point? I feel like I'm young again. So you're a child? Uh huh. So on the count of three, we're going to move forward to the next significant time in that life. One, two, and three. What's happening around you? I just see a bunch of like, white flowers. And Kind of like an open field. I see 
the boy and the husband who are just there. And how does it feel to be there right now? It feels good. So I want you to look around or just become aware of where you're heading and see if your home is nearby. It's behind us. And so what does your home look like? I see that cabin again from the back side. How old is your boy now? He still looks young. I'm not sure his age. Is this a place where you came to when you ran away from the white people? Yes. Was your husband part of your tribe? Yes. And so he had a wife before you and she was killed by the white people? Mm-hmm. How was she killed? A knife. Why was she killed? I'm not sure. And how do you then come together with your husband? Because he needs help. Do you like him? Yeah. Do you love him? I don't think so. And is that okay for you to be in that relationship? Yes. What about him? How does he feel about you? He cares for me. So I want you to get a sense of your overall life together. Do your feelings grow for each other? Yes. And do you have any children together? It's just that boy. On the count of three. Let's go to the day that your husband dies. One, two, and three. Just become aware of what happens to your husband. He just dies in that bed in the cabin. What happened to him? He just old. How old is he when he passes away? I don't know. You lived a long life together? Mm -hmm. Did you stay by yourselves for most of your life or did you join other tribal members? It seemed like we were alone. Do you know why that was? To be free. Were there others that you could have connected with? I don't think so. Were they killed? I think they were. On the count of three, you're going to move to the last day of this life. One, two, three. Tell me what you see. I'm in that bed. In your cabin? Mm -hmm. Is there anybody with you? I see three people looking down at me. Who are they? Family. Who are they in your family? grandson and his parents. And how were you feeling as you were laying there? I'm at peace. How old are you? I want to say 80. And are they saying anything to you? They just said thank you for protecting her. Are you ill? No. So you're just down because of old age? Mm -hmm. So just allow yourself on the next breath 
to feel your spirit lifting out of your body. And as your spirit lifts out of your body, what is your feeling or sense as you're looking down? I was lucky to have them. They'll be okay. Are they going to continue to stay by themselves or will they find other people? I think they'll find other people. Okay. So I would like you to look back at that entire life from your soul's perspective. And I want you to become aware now of what purpose you set for that experience. What path did you choose for yourself? To care. To care about a child that wasn't mine. And did you succeed at that? Yes. And why was that important for you to experience? It's just important to let that love in. Okay, good. So I'd like you to take away allow those, lives those to go in that you're drifting to, to allow yourself to begin to once again feel the lower time as you are drifting and simply carrying on to the next take and time with no concern to you about what you can see or what you will allow as you move to the next time and on the count of three. You're going to see yourself again standing on the surface. You're simply going to become aware of what's around you. One, two, and three. Tell me the first impression that you get. I'm on that cliff again. And what do you notice? The grass swaying. It's cold. And when you look Beyond the cliff, what do you see there? I see water. It's an ocean. So what I'd like you to do is look down at where your feet are. And tell me what you see on your feet. I'm bare foot. Become aware of your entire body and what you're wearing on your body. It doesn't seem like I'm wearing anything. Are you in a male or a female body? I'm in a female body. Young or old? Teenager. Are you healthy? Mm-hmm. And so, you're naked? Mm-hmm. Do you have anything at all on you? Just something heavy on my head. Is it something that you're wearing or you're carrying on the head? I think I'm just wearing it. So just become aware of what that is. It just seems like maybe some shells are strung together and just there. Do you like wearing it? Yes. So become aware of why you are there on that cliff. I'm just watching. And as you're watching, is there any kind of feeling that you're experiencing? No, I'm just enjoying the scenery. Are you there by yourself? Mm-hmm. And is there any place that you need to be? I need to go home. So on the count of three, you're going to see yourself standing in front of your home. One, two, and three. What do you see? It's like a stone cottage in a valley. Is there anything next to it or around it? No. I'd like you to go inside and tell me what you see inside. Just windows, just small windows, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot of light coming in. And is there more than one room? Yes. So walk through the rooms and tell me what you're noticing in them. I see one room. Down the small hall there's another room. 
and then the third room all together on the side of the house. What do you notice in those rooms? I see a smaller child playing with like a rabbit, like a bunny rabbit mm -hmm. and stuff in them. They're on the bed. Do you know what your relationship is to that child? I'm the mother. And how old are you? In my thirties. Notice what you're wearing right now. A dress. Describe it to me. A long white flowy dress. Boots on. Why do you wear the boots? To go hiking. Do you go by yourself? I take the child. So let's go back to the cottage for a moment. Who else lives with you in that cottage other than your child? I'm sensing my husband. Is he in the house now? Uh-uh. No, he lives there. So as you're walking through the house, is there anything else that catches your eye? Anything of interest? I keep seeing a dream catcher by the window. And is that significant to you? He gave it to me. Your husband did? Mm-hmm. And become aware of what you do uh, for work or during the day. I just stay home. And how do you feel about that? It's good. What does your husband do? He's, he's just gone. I don't know if he's off somewhere. How long is he gone for? A year. Does he go away to work? Yes. Let's move to the time that he returns. One, two, and three. When you see him returning, what happens? He just has a lot of luggage. How does he travel? I think it's by foot. How does he carry his luggage? On his back. They're like duffel bags. And what's in them? I see some silver cups. Why did he bring them? I'm not sure. So are you aware now of where he went and what his work was? Getting that he's a sailor. And so for this whole year, was he on a ship? Mm -hmm. And where did he sail to? Just on the coast. So now that he's back, what are his plans? What's going to happen next? I'm going to move. Where are you going? America. Why do you want to go to America? I'm not sure. And where do you live now? I'm not really sure. Do you both want to go? Mm-hmm. We're leaving to go for a better life. And where do you plan to go in America? Maine. Do you know anybody there? No. Is there work that you're going to get there? He's going to work. What kind of work is there in Maine? He's going to be a sailor. 
On the count of three, I want you to move to the day that you're leaving. One, two, and three. And just tell me what's happening around you. I'm just walking away. From where? From that cottage. Are you carrying anything? We're just carrying what we can. And do you have a sense that you have any family members remaining there? Not in the cottage, but in the country? No. Neither one of you? I think he's leaving someone, his family. So as you walk away, where are you heading? Just down the trail. And where does that take you? To a ship. A large white ship. Can you describe it a little bit more? I'm just saying white and navy. And so as you get on the ship, where is your cabin? Kind of in the middle. And what is it like inside? Two beds. Is it just for your family? Mm-hmm. And I wonder if you perhaps sign documents as you have tickets. If you can see a date on those tickets or on any documents or anywhere on the ship. I'm saying 1904. And do you see the name of the place that you're leaving? Something like the letter B. How are you feeling about leaving? I feel okay about it. So, how is the journey going? Let's move forward a day or two. Tell me how things are going. Things are good. I'm with a husband and a child, just on the ship walking around. Are you aware how long it will take to reach America? A few months. Are you going straight to Maine? I think we're going to New York. And so on the count of three, we're going to move to the day that you arrive at your destination. One, two, and three. Tell me what's happening around you. I'm not really seeing anything. Do you have a sense that you arrived? Not really. So let's back up. Let's move to a significant moment during the journey. One, two, and three. Tell me if there is anything significant that happened during the journey. I'm just getting the feeling that we're going under. The ship? Mm hmm And where are you? I can't tell. And where is your husband and your son? They're gone. So what do you see around you right now? I think I'm in the water as well. Are you inside the ship or outside? I'm outside. It's cold. Do you notice anything around yourself? I'm just kind of floating there and cold. And there's other people in the water. Are you able to stay on the surface? For a little bit. And are you aware of what happened? How did you get into the water? sinking. How did you begin to sink? What happened to the ship? Something just went wrong. 
what happens next. That's just it. Do you pass? Yeah. So as you take your next breath, allow your spirit to just lift out of your body, feeling a great sense of peace and relief. So as you look back at that life from a spirit perspective, what is the purpose that you wanted to have for that life as you were planning it? To take a journey. Tell me more about that. Just to be able to leave where you came from and start over. There may be a time when you connect with your soul family. Let me know if you sense them around you. Mm -hmm. And as they welcome you, you may notice that you're sitting around a fire in a circle. They begin to approach you one by one. And you begin to recognize who they are within your multiple life experiences, perhaps in your current life. Mm -hmm. So tell me about them, who you're meeting, and what that experience is like. We're just sitting, seems like they're sitting around a campfire. I see my brother out. I see Bert. I see my mom and dad to the left of them. And I see Zach. They're saying welcome home. And are they part of your soul family where you travel together? Yes. And so as each of them comes to you, they will have a message for you from an eternal soul perspective. So tell me who comes to you first. I keep saying Alex first. And what do you know about him now that you didn't know before? I think he was In your tribe? Uh-huh. I see. Why did he take on that role? So I could protect him. That's what he needed to experience? Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that he has to say to you? Mm -hmm. And so as you let him go for now, See if there is anybody else who wants to come up to you. He just thinks that he just says thank you for loving me. Mm -hmm. And so is there anything else that you become aware of about the lives that you had together? He was just both men. Was he your husband in both lives? Mm -hmm. So, as you allow yourself to let him go for the moment, I wonder if you will notice that there are some other beings around that campfire that you may not have recognized that is coming forward to greet you. I'm sensing Andy. And is that the spirit of your dog? Mm hmm And so, as you connect, what happens? It was the cat that was in your second life? I think it was the first one. The black and white cat? Mm-hmm. And so she travels with you? Mm-hmm. And what does she have to say to you? She was just a friend, you know? <laughs> just someone to be there. And what are you feeling right now? I feel gratitude for that. And so just express that to her. As you let her go, just let me know if there's anybody else that wants to come and speak to you. I sense Jeff is there too. My friend that passed. Mm-hmm. 
And what is the feeling that you get from him? It's okay. He said I'll see you again. And you can ask him about the reason that he chose to leave this life so early. <laughs> so I could just experience that loss. And why was it important for you to experience the loss? To know how important a loved one is during this lifetime. So he gave you a gift? Yes. So you can express to him how you feel about that now. And when you're ready, allow him to retreat and go in his own way. Is there anybody else who's moving forward? To speak with you. I'll see you my grandpa Jerry. Okay. So as he comes forward. He has a blue jay on his shoulder. And that's the blue jay that has been showing up. Mm hmm And you see that too? Mm-hmm. And what does he have to say to you? That they were all just signs here on the right path, with the right person. And I wonder if you can ask him if you are on your right path right now in this life. How does he feel about your journey so far? He's impressed. Why is he impressed? Because I've taken my own path and I've been open to receiving messages like the blue jay and knowing that that's a clue. How does it make you feel to know that he's impressed? It's a good feeling. Good. So I'd like you to embrace him and say your goodbyes for the moment knowing that he's always here. In fact you can ask him will he be around you for as long as you are in this life? and see what he says. The answer is yes. You see, Luca is part of that somehow. Luca the dog? Mm -hmm. Is he connecting with you through the dog? Yes. Luca brings calmness and happiness to me. Is that the calmness and happiness that your grandpa wants to send to you? Yes. Beautiful. So every time you connect with Luca, you'll be able to sense your connection with your grandpa? Yes. Beautiful. So when you're ready, allow him to retreat back. And let me know if there's anybody else that wants to come forward now. Not seeing anything else. So I'd like you to allow all of those images to begin to fade away as you're sending your love and appreciation to your entire soul family. I would like to speak with Carrie's higher consciousness. Do I have permission to do that? Yes. So I know that higher consciousness could have brought forth many different lifetimes, but you brought forward the life of a native woman with her adopted son. And then a woman that died on her way to America. So can you help us understand why those two lives were important for Carrie to see? To experience the loss of a family. How is that relevant to her current life, to her current concerns? Why was this particular message important for her today? She needs to know the difference. The difference between loss and love? Yes. Does she not know the difference now? No. 
Why is that? She doesn't have kids now. Why is that message important for this particular life? She would like to experience that. So perhaps you can take her to the moment of planning the potentials for this life, of course, before she was born, and help her understand the purpose, the experience that she wanted to have in this life. She would like to pass down a legacy to her children. And that is the main purpose for this life? Yes. And is there any particular legacy? Creativity is legacy. I see. She's an artist in this life, and obviously creativity is very important to her, but her path in life is a little bit different from other members of her family. And so she sometimes questions it. Can you help her understand why she's on this path and if she's on the right track? She was meant to go in that direction and create her own life. Even though it's sometimes challenging, but she will find success. What was the family contract? Why was it important for her to be on a different life path from the rest of her family? What was the significance of that decision? To find the confidence of being who you are and having your own life. Okay. She's wondering if she's meant to have children and focus all of her energy on children, or if she should continue with her professional life and focus on her art, and if it's an either-or decision, or if she could have both. So if you can help her gain clearer perspective, that would be helpful. She will be happy to have kids on her own time, and she will find great joy in teaching her children the role of a creative mind. And is there any guidance or the next step that you can suggest to her in reaching success within her business? Focusing on others. In what way? Helping others learn how to be creative. So is it more of a teaching, uh, coaching role? Perhaps. Can you help her understand what success would look like from a spirit perspective? She told me what she sees success as on a human level. But I wonder if you can look at it from your higher perspective and tell her what success looks like to you. Success is being happy with the choice you made and knowing that you're doing what you love. That's the ultimate success. So it's not about the amount of money that she makes with her art? No, it's the peace. Does she need to worry about the financial side of her no. business? She will be taken care of on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes. So with your definition of success, is she successful now or is she on her way to success? She's on her way. Okay. Before we wrap up, I'd like you to do a body scan. Start at the top of her head, scan the entire body, and tell me if there is anything off balance that or needs attention. Just call it out and describe it to me. Just the digestive system, the gut, just the 
This has an imbalance. Can you go ahead and balance right now? Yes. Okay, so go ahead and work on that. And tell me what you're doing and when it's done. I'm just clearing out the negative energy. Is it there because she's absorbing it? Yes. Can you tell her more about that? How is it that she's collecting that energy there? Not having an outlet to release the stress, like exercising. So it comes from her personal stress in her life? Yes. So how is the balancing going? It's good. Is it completed? Yes. Good, thank you. Does she collect that negative energy anywhere else in her body? No. Okay, good. Have you completed the body scan or is there more to go? She's healthy. Good, thank you. Now one of the concerns she has is that she has rosacea sometimes. Can you tell her what causes it? It's just the high stress. Okay. Where is her stress coming from? What is behind it? Just always questioning that path. So how is she feeling now? Is she sensing a clearer perspective? Yes, she has clarity. And is she able to release the stress? Yes. So as the stress goes away, she will experience less rosacea? Yes. As we end, I want to give you an opportunity to give Carrie a message. Is there anything you want her to know? She will find joy, and she's ready for her family. Okay, thank you. So now I'm going to ask the higher consciousness to begin to recede to where it belongs. With much love and thanks for the help and information that it has given Carrie today. Hi again. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please leave a comment below and also don't forget to like and subscribe so you can receive notifications of future sessions. Bye.